everyone, I'm Marley Dias. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the National Education Association's Read Across America Day, one of my favorite days of the year. Read Across America celebrates reading and diverse books all year long. But today is special because millions of readers all across the country will celebrate by picking up a book and reading with a child. I'm especially excited today because I get to talk to two very special people, the author and illustrator of Tiara's Hat Parade, this month's featured book for Read Across America. It's a really sweet story about a little girl with a big idea to help make her mother's dream come true with beautiful hats. Hi Kelly, it is so nice to meet you. I told you before I have a soft spot for authors. You guys are the most wonderful and important storytellers. Uh, so how are you? I'm doing well. And as I told you earlier, you're an author too. So it is such a joy and a pleasure to meet you. And I love how you've been creating change and centering Black girl books. And so thank you so much. I really love your story because it talks about an aspect of our culture that I honestly did not know a lot about, especially given my parents and just my own personal experiences. But I've always known, and especially in images of church and of community for Black people, that hats are a crucial part of an expression of culture, and they have an extremely special meaning in this story. Uh, and in the back of the book, you talk about the history of Black women's hats and this kind of tradition, and that so many women make amazing hats. So can you share a little bit more about your research process and getting kind of engrossed in that community or that, you know, specific facet of a, a cultural aspect and tradition within the Black community? Absolutely. So my love of hats goes back to when I was a girl and I would sit in church and just admire these hats that just so show such majesty and style and personality of each person who wore, who wore them. They demanded to be seen, you know, and I think that's part when we're talking about Black culture and the, the connection to hats, when we're talking about a world that tries to render us invisible and sometimes tries to crush our spirits. Hats are a real powerful way of showing presence and putting that crown on and holding your head up high and showing dignity. And, you know, hats frame our beauty and our flair in a way that when we look at popular images, sometimes our beauty is not celebrated, but hats are there to do that. And they've done it for generations. And what I wanted to do with this book, along with telling the story of Ti Tiara and her mom, was to pay homage to trailblazing Black women milliners. So in the back matter of the book, I have an author's note that goes into my personal connection to hats, as well as summaries of three um, trailblazing milliners. So your book features essentially uh, the most Black girl and Black woman filled <laughs> set of characters that I've seen. And I, I love it so much for that. I think you show different hair types, body types, experiences, kinds of teachers, students, and people, uh, and it's diversity across the board. So as you know, you're making a conscious decision about the story you want to tell, why do you think that it's important that everyone gets to read books in which, you know, they can see themselves reflected uh, you know, as well as books that allow readers to see a world where people are different than them. I love the metaphor that Dr. Regine Sims Bishop uses, and that's, you know, often quoted about books being windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. And I think, you know, the notion of books being ways to look into other lives and other cultures, sliding glass doors, where the world literally fades away and you become part of the story that you're reading. And then that mirror where you can see yourself. And for Black children, Native children, kids of color, there are far too few mirrors. And so it's really important for us to think about ways to center voices of people from those communities. Because when we tell our own stories, we're bringing nuance and authenticity and intimacy and a feeling of home. So I really want these books to be places that feel like home to readers who aren't always uh, able to see themselves in stories. I want all readers to know that every child deserves to be the star of a story. So before you go, I feel like we have to show our hats and have our own little <laughs> mini hat parade since DR's hat parade is the title and the entire book yes. is about that. So I'm gonna put on mine. I crocheted mine myself and then I taped on my flag of my parents, my dog, a book, and then 1000 Black Girl Books, the name of my campaign. And then- I, I love it. And, uh, I, and, but I, and I love that you made your hat. I mean, yes, that's- I did make my hat. That's and so I feel amazing. like I'm my own little crochet milliner because I, I can make something <laughs> myself. 
absolutely. So I don't know how to make uh, formal hats. I made a little fascinator, which I'm going to put on, which is easy for kids to make. It's just a headband. And I put uh, doilies around a paper plate. But if you look on the side, I have some of my heroes on there, which are um, Ida B. Wells, who was an activist and journalist, Mary McLeod Bethune, who was a pioneering educator and college founder, and Faith Ringgold, who is a painter, mixed media artist, quilter, and picture book author. So I wanted to really just celebrate writers as warriors and champions of who we are. It's so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This has been so much fun. Nicole, it is so nice to meet you. I know we're talking about picture books today, but as the illustrator, you are essentially taking a plot, you know, some small pieces of dialogue, some small descriptors, and then building a story to life for especially, you know, young children to see and, and kind of grasp and work together with the words. So how does it work to really draw the pictures for a story that somebody else wrote and you don't even necessarily know where it's going to go and what you have to do? So how does that kind of imagination process work for you? Well, it's, um, it really just happens. <laughs> um, whenever I read a manuscript, I instantly see pictures in my head. And that's how I know that that's going to be the manuscript that's right for me to illustrate. So if I get a manuscript that I don't see any images in my head, uh, then I don't work on that one. So with this one, I saw all kinds of shapes and colors and hats and the mother-daughter relationship. And I just um, really immediately um, wanted to, to illustrate this book. What kind of process did you go through when illustrating these hats? Well, at first, uh, I, I like to have the emotional connection uh, at first. So I would um, the first thing I did was remember how it felt when I was in some of those churches when I was uh, a little girl and seeing all those amazing hats. And uh, my second source was the library. I would go to the library and look at, at books. I also uh, heard from the author who I had the pleasure of meeting and uh, she recommended a book uh, called Crowns which I immediately went out and got. And uh, the book is stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, the author also, uh, she had descriptions of uh, some of the hats in the story. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And as someone that was not a little girl who went to those churches and, and, and you know experienced those things, but still being a young black girl, I knew how important and how captivating they were. And I think you do an utterly amazing job of showcasing how much confidence, expression and creativity they can bring to a person and bring to a community. But for myself, I'm a beginner. I cannot draw very well at all. So we wanted to know if you could give us a little bit of a beginner's tutorial on how to draw a hat or draw someone wearing a hat. Well, sure. Let me just uh, grab my sketchbook so I can uh, show you. We're just gonna draw a, a basic hat that's kind of um, based on the, the hat that Tiara is wearing on the cover. So the top, yeah, there you go. <laughs> The top is going to be um, sort of more round, so we're going to draw like a like a like an upside down U for the top of the hat, and you can see there's a band um, a band that goes around. So we're going to close it off by doing like almost like a little slightly smiley face, and then to make the band a strip, we just sort of follow that line again, like that. And then the brim, we'll start uh, in the back, we'll come out like this. And we'll kind of make a, a graceful shape like that. And then we'll close it off. And then you might see a little bit of the hat behind her. So we're just gonna sort of go like that. So you can sort of see that it's three dimensional. And there's a hat and you can decorate it however you want so you could add like a big bow and maybe even a ribbon maybe there's a ribbon. And curly little curlies 
So that's, it, that's so cool. Thank you so much. I think as you described the shapes, you said graceful. And I think that's a great way to describe you and the book uh, itself. I think you show the importance of imagination and of creativity, which, which is uh, extremely important, especially for young kids. So I want to say thank you so much. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too. That was so much fun. I hope you had fun too, but it doesn't have to end here. Go to nea.org slash read across for more diverse books and resources you can use at home or school to make reading fun. And don't forget to pick up a book and read with a child. <laughs>